Well, Tarek, I really appreciate you taking the time for joining us here at the 5G Transformation Forum. It's been a day of interesting conversations, but I, I wanna get your input here, particularly around autonomous networking. I've heard you share your vision before and use the analogy of uh, level four autonomy, like with uh, self-driving vehicles. So maybe you could give us an overview of the degree of network operations that are currently benefiting from automation there in your Japanese network, and maybe help us understand how you get from where you are today to that vision of, of level four autonomy. Absolutely, thank you very much for inviting me. Really delighted to be here with you today. Um, you know, when we looked at building um, racket and mobile network with a fully virtualized architecture, we also thought that we had a remarkable opportunity to transform, to transform the foundation of what we call our data pipeline. In that context, legacy systems such as operation subsystems, orchestrations, and many others, we had a great opportunity to fundamentally transform the thinking of how the construct of all of these comes together to provide true telemetry, uh, real-time performance management, move away from counter-based way of monitoring and managing network to real-time customer experience. So the journey started with a complete fundamental transformation in the OSS layer. We went from monolithic boxes, from fault performance management, configuration, accounting, security, workflow, into one modular architecture. And what a remarkable thing that we have seen when we have done this. So um, I've always talked in the industry about this dream towards a level four autonomy in networks. And today I would tell you, I don't feel this is no longer a white paper discussion. I feel this is more pragmatic reality, uh, more of a tactical approach. I am not underesti uh, underestimating the complexity that we need to go through to really achieve that vision. But wouldn't it be exciting that if the industry that we're in today talks about the concepts of autonomous networks the same way that you hear in autonomous cars. I think now that the excitement that we see is the reality is in, within reach. I think I've always talked about this. I really believe we are within 24 month window to be able to achieve a considerable level of advancements in the concepts of autonomous network. So um, if you look at rocket and mobile today, I would say we're about 55, 60% into the journey. But the good news for me personally is the foundation has already been built. That was the tough part. The tough part is just getting through these early stages of how you extract telemetry from the virtual network functions or from our containers or from our elements, whether it is radio or, or other elements in real time, how you ingest them into large big data platform how do you develop the AI and machine learning that sits on top of these uh, architecture to be able to make decisive decisions on uh, whether it is network isolation, healing, elasticity, and many others. So I, you know, I think in all in all, I, I believe the hard work is behind us, which is about the foundation uh, building. And now most of our focus is just about continue to really emphasize the development and the advancements of the use cases on top of this foundation. So with this technological foundation in place, the other element here is the people. When you've built this software-centric network as a code, help me understand the changes in the people and the skill sets that you need to really successfully operate this highly flexible 5G network. You know, so, I mean, my, my belief is obviously the skill sets to run and manage a software uh, network platform. It, I, in my view, I think it just needs to be a remarkably different skill sets. The challenges are very, very different. Mm -hmm. So if you come into our operation room, you'll discover that the traditional organizational structures of operations, this doesn't exist. We only hire people that have software background and capability. So we have quite a bit of SREs running and managing this network. And the mentality, by the way, it's not just also about the fact that you just have software engineering skill sets make life easy with you. I think it's a bit more of a cultural issue as well. So the concept that we go through is, if you look at it traditionally, what we have done in telecom, you know, we always followed standard method of procedures, various checklists, 
Well, these checklists maybe could have created a decade ago, and maybe today they don't apply. These checklists today have been transformed from Word documents into digitized workflows. And that's really fundamentally required a, a cultural awareness that writing code to address automation is a critical thing. Finding every opportunity that there is a manual work that's happening. And, and the way I told my team, I said, look, wouldn't be life be easier if you don't have to wake up at night because of outages? I want you to have balance in your life. And in that context, we focus into two things. One is the skill sets, for sure. If you don't have software background, I think you will struggle to sustain and develop your career as the network moves into a software architecture and a software platform. So reskilling existing resources is very important and hiring the right talent and the right pipeline of skills to be able to look at today and tomorrow's challenges in the software world is very, very different. But in addition, the second pillar is also, I believe, is as important. The second pillar is about this cultural awareness that we need to transform, we need to evolve from manual way of engagement and manual methods of procedures into full digitized workflows, fully automated, and that requires a level of commitment that, it, believe me, today, I even within Rakuten, I, I tell you, you need to constantly push this uh, energy towards uh, automation, and towards a discovery of problem and, and, and solving these problem via code rather than developing a manual method of procedure to address the issue that was discovered. So throughout the day today, we've got a diversity of perspectives on the technological strategies that go into 5G success, the operational strategies that are just as important but we've also talked a good deal about how you take those two pieces and turn it into service monetization. So I'd love to get your perspective on what you see as the key elements to taking the technology, taking the people, and turning that into monetization opportunities for both consumer and, and enterprise customers. You know, I mean, I think um, in, in all my career, I tell you the struggle that I personally had is trying to explain, especially for technology and operation team, that we are here because of the customer. How do you take everything that you build, you develop, and you evolve with a customer centricity mindset? It's been like, honestly, a struggle, a challenge to say, an engineer that's in the front line, understanding as they are building, whether it is responsible for core or radio, that all the work that you are doing today to drive service agility, and, and enhancements on offering are also all done just to address a big important segment in, uh, in our organization, which is focus on, on customer centricity. So when we looked at 5G, you know, I've always said that really for the first time I feel that there is a technology that has the essence to fundamentally transform the way that consumers consume data allocation new age application, and not just for consumers, also for enterprises. And in that context, we focused on ensuring that the 5G platform architecture built is not just about super big highways in terms of massive bandwidth capability at the radio side, but you must build also an edge platform architecture that is able to deliver to you an ultra low latency application. I think the construct of you know, organizational awareness about software, the construct of service agility, I believe that is going to really unleash um, a, a level of innovation in telecom that maybe we haven't had in a while. The ability that you could introduce services in days, not months. I mean, just think about the process. I'll give you the analogy of a process of a software upgrade in a traditional network for a large element. It could be a packet core, an IMS core, or even the radio. Now, what happens if this upgrade happens almost in near real time? What happens if this upgrade doesn't need to wait for maintenance windows? What happens if we could do this inline upgrade during the day with the objective to drive faster delivery of services and agility to consumers? I think we are really on that edge, the edge of trying to find a big breakthrough in this industry. And, and it's a really exciting time, in my opinion, uh, to be in telecom because I could see 
the benefits of what most global mobile operators are hard working on to deliver new 5G services to their consumers, I think um, uh, you know we, we will see shortly, much faster than what we've seen in 4G, um, I, I would say advanced applications that demand ultra low latency and advanced applications that would benefit from the standalone architecture that are being built and as well as the enablement of true end-to-end -end network slicing uh, into especially the enterprises. So I think the construct of both the organization, the people, and this architecture that uh, modern networks is built on uh, is going to help substantially advance services and mostly service agility into consumers and businesses. Well, Tarek, it's always great to get your perspective on the industry. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts with our audience here today at the 5G Transformation Forum. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here with you again. Thank you. Take care.